In this video, we're looking at the New South Wales Economics HSC course, Year 12, Globalisation and Economic Development, and in particular, we're looking at the Human Development Index. In terms of the syllabus, we're focusing on these dot points here, distribution of income and wealth, and particularly the quality of life indicators. So to compare material living standards in terms of an economy, economists use gross national income or GNI per capita. And there's a previous video that you can go back and watch about that one. But economists also compare economic development between nations, not just material living standards. And economic development is about quality of life. It's about what it's like for an individual living in their country not just what they can afford. To measure economic development, economists need to look at health, education and environmental quality, as well as material living standards. And we know material living standards is measured by GNI per capita. But now we're introducing a broader measure of economic development. And this is known as the Human Development Index, or the HDI. With the HDI, zero, a score of zero means no human development, and one is maximum human development. So let's take a look at what makes up the HDI. There are three components to the HDI. The first one is GNI per capita. Now we know that GNI per capita is all about material living standards, what people can afford. You can see here it says PPP basis. This is what's known as purchasing power parity. This essentially equalizes the strength or the relative purchasing power of each currency so we can have a common measure across the world, even though each currency is worth a slightly different value. For our purposes, it's a common way of comparing how much income people earn in different countries. First part of the HDI, okay, GNI per capita. Second part of the HDI is life expectancy at birth. How long are people expected to live? So this demonstrates health and nutrition standards in a country. It shows us the quality of health care. It shows us how healthy people are in terms of their lives in that country. The final element of the HDI is levels of education attainment. So this measures how much education people generally receive in a country. How many years of schooling do they attend? The point of this is that education is really crucial in terms of upskilling a workforce, in terms of creating a workforce uh, that is able to be productive, that is able to do uh, jobs that is able to increase GDP. So all of these measures are part of how we as economists measure economic development in a country. Because this video is in terms of general ideas about HDI, to find the most recent stats which you'll need for your HSC, you should search online UNDP Human Development Index and either the current year or the previous year to find the most recent stats. Let's have a look at how this can be asked in terms of the HSC. So this is a question from 2010. So in the top right corner there I can, I've got there, remember the HDI consists of GNI per capita, material living standards, life expectancy at birth, and levels of educational attainment. So let's have a look at the question. The table shows the HDI values for two countries, country A and country B. Now, on the face of it, we can see that country B has a higher HDI, has greater levels of human development, greater levels of economic development. So let's have a look at the categories we've got. A, adult literacy rates are higher in country A than in country B. Now, this is unlikely because literacy relates to education. And given the figures, we would assume that country B would have higher literacy standards. So A is out. B says the level of urbanization 
urbanisation being the movement into cities, is greater in country A than country B. Now, we know that when countries develop, they move away from the countryside, away from agriculture, and into the cities and into factories. So we know that the level of urbanisation is likely greater in a country with higher economic development. So urbanisation would be higher in country B. So B is not correct. D says public institutions are more developed in country A than in country B. Now we know that public institutions are more likely stronger and more reliable in a country with higher economic development. So public institutions would be more developed in country B. So this leaves us with answer C. Population growth rate in country A is higher than in country B. This is the case because population growth rates tend to slow as countries become more and more developed. So less developed countries have higher population rates. So that for this, we can see, okay, country A, lower levels of economic development. Okay, this means the population growth rate is likely higher in that country.